Hi there and welcome to a brand new Blender tutorial. In this one I will be showing you how to make a glass shader for EV that looks like this. The result you can see on the screen right now. So without any further ado, let's hit it straight away. With EV loaded I've gone into the rendered view. So you can see there is nothing fancy going on. I only have these ice cubes floating around in my cups right now. These are just one basic glass BSTF. So there's no fancy magic going on as of right now. I'm going to go to the shading tab at the top and going to click on one of my glass objects. Let's choose this one in the middle. I'm going to hit new and I'm going to call it fancy EV glass. The first thing I'll do is delete to the principled BSTF as we will not be needing that one. Let us get, for starters, a, what is it called, a glossy BSDF. Going to plug the glossy BSDF into the surface and it looks sort of metallic, but it's looking really bland. Let's reduce the roughness to something like 0.01. We can play with the values later. Now it should look sort of metallic. I'm going to disable the overlays so we don't have any uh, weird lines that we will not be seeing in the final render. Let us get a mix shader. So shift A, search for mix shader. Going to plug it right here. And I'm going to plug the glossy BSDF into the bottom socket of it. Next up, I'm going to get a Fresnel node. So shift A, search for Fresnel. Should be the first result when pressing F. I'm going to put the factor into the factor of the mix shader. Next up, I'm going to get a, another mix shader, which I'm going to plug right here and put the top out, uh, output into the top input of the first shader. Next up, I want to get a transparent, transparent BSDF right here. And I'm going to put that into the top of the second mix shader. Now you can see we're starting to getting uh, we're starting to get some uh, transparency in our object. Now this is not great yet. Um, it's looking better than before, but it's not finished. Um, now for the bottom socket, we will need a refraction setup or a dispersion setup. Setup. So I'm going to press Shift A, search for refraction, and I'm going to need three of them one with only green uh, or red, one with only green, and one with only blue. So, how are we going to connect all of that into the second mix shader when it only has one input? It's fairly easy. We're going to get an add shader, plug the red and the green into it, then a green, uh, another one and plug the blue and the second uh, shader into it. Next up, we're going to place that into the bottom socket of the mix shader, like so. Now it's looking more like glass, but we're going to get that even better. We, What we are going to do is we are going to connect the Fresnel node into this second shader as well. And now you can see it already makes a great difference. Now to tidy things up a little bit or make it messy uh, even more. Let me see. I'm going to just put these in there. Now it's looking like basic glass. Uh, you can see some speckles in there. We will get rid of them soon. Um, first, what we're going to do is get some value nodes. So we're going to need three of them. One is going to be our index of refraction. We're going to set that to 1.5, which should be the standard value for glass. I'm going to plug that everywhere where it says IOR, here, here, and here, and also into the Fresnel node. Next up, what I'm going to do is get one for the roughness. I'm going to put that to like 0.01. I'm going to plug that everywhere where it says roughness. So we only have to adjust 
one value should we ever need to adjust the roughness of our object. Uh, uh, there. Now if I play with the slider here, you can see that we are getting different roughness variants. I'm going to leave it as 0 .1, 0 0.01 right now. And now what we're going to do is this is going to be our um, dispersion factor. So for that, we need another math node. Going to have set one to add and one to subtract. Going to plug this value in here and in here into the bottom sockets. Let's bring this a little bit closer. And the top value will be the index of refraction. So what we're going to do right now is plug that into the RR of red and blue. And what does that do? As of right now, with this set to zero, the index of refraction for all of these colors are the same. So there is no color separation. But once you change this value here, you're adding to the red and you're subtra subtracting from the blue respectively. So if I set this to like 0.05, you can see that you're getting some color separation, which is called dispersion. You can play around with these values. I'm going to leave it at something more or less extreme, something like 0 0.05, which is fairly noticeable. Usually you would handle this with great care, so 0 0.001 or something like that. So very, very small values are usually enough for this. So with this out of the way, um, you will be playing with these three uh, values here and you wouldn't really want to touch anything else in this setup. Um, now what we need to do is we basically need to see, um, look at the settings of these materials. So right here in the shader tab, in the material tab, you can see these here. So for us, we're going to leave this at uh, transparent shadows. We're going to leave this on. Bump only is fine. We're going to set this to divot. So this is basically fine as well. And we're going to go to raised, ray traced transmission. We're going to enable that. And that is it, I think, yes. Now let's go to our main settings, so the render settings over here. We're going to set this here to 512 and this here as well. Then under the, two, 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 where is it? Ray tracing settings, we're going to enable this. We're going to set the resolution to one by one. And we're going to disable denoising. You will see why we do this. It's because denoising is actually getting rid of the effect and darkening our um, outcome. So we're going to disable denoising and have a few more samples. The render time should take just as long because you, uh, on one side you can have lower samples um, with denoising, um, but then the denoising takes more time and this way you're taking away the, the, the time that it needs to denoise, but instead filling the time with more samples. So this is basically the way to go. Uh, to go. You can already see the streakiness, looks really, really good um, and it's going to look even better in just a moment. Uh, we are going to performance and going to hit high quality normals. You can see that this already makes a little bit of a difference and that should be it. Um, mostly, I think I forgot something, screen tracing, yes. I'm going to set the precision to one. You can see that's already changing up things quite a bit. And we're going to set the th thickness to zero. That's going to make the most drastic of effects or changes. I'm going to go back to this part here, I'm going to press A to select everything, I'm going to hit Control C to copy, and then I'm going to uh, select an inside um, mesh here, so basically the liquid, I'm going to hit New, A, Delete, to delete everything in the node tree, and I'm going to paste over my former node tree inside here. Now basically what I'm going to do um, to make this look even better is take this and plug it in here and take this and plug it in there. Now I can take 
my value over here for the dispersion, set it to zero, and that will make this look like so. Um, let's go back to the material tab here, and right there I'm going to set different values. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. We're going to set this here to blend it, and we're going to disable transparency overlap. And that should be it, yes. I do have notes on my left side, so that is why I am a little bit on the silent side, just checking if everything is correct, and it seems to be so. Let's select our other materials or other objects and give them the same material, and it will look better in just a moment because we have a final trick up our sleeve. I'm going to go to the layout tab, go to the solid shading mode. I'm going to look for something. Let me just replace my origin to the center of the scene. Uh, cursor to world origin. I'm going to press shift A and then we are going to look for a to, 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 to. where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Light probe sphere. And we're going to set the sphere to a box shape, like so. We're going to set the fall off to zero. And now we're going to scale our uh, box here to be the size of our glass. So basically what I'll do is first I'll get the thickness right. You want to set it to almost intersect with the glass. And then I'm going to just scale it up along the z-axis, so S and then Z to lock it to the z-axis, make it a little bit larger. Doesn't matter if it has headroom or not. What we want to do is have it almost clip with the center line here, but not quite, so we don't have weird shading on our ground plate. And once we go into rendered mode, you can already see what a difference this makes. If I take it away and have it back, it looks just that much better with the letters in place, uh, the, with the uh, volume in place. Uh, you can see how big the difference is. So I'm going to basically parent this to the glass. So whenever I move the glass, this moves with it. I'm going to hide this. Oops, let's not hide it because it's not all one mesh. I'm going to move it to the side and do the same thing for the other two options uh, objects as well. Um, I'm going to speed this up so you don't have to wait. Okay, so now it just basically comes down to rearranging your scene like how it was before to make it look nice. And once we have everything in place, our scene should look like this. And I think that looks really, really great. We can go back to the shading tab and play with our values. Um, I think this looks pretty good, but if you wanted to have more dispersion or less dispersion, you can also go into the negatives. If you wanted, uh, that would all be possible. A realistic value would be something like this will be barely noticeable, um, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to keep it like so. And as you can see, once I hit render, it won't take long, even with denoising and um, 512 samples per pixel, it looks like this and goes in six seconds. I'm going to set it to 4K because that is the resolution of this video. I'm going to go even larger with the sample count. So it, just so you can see that it uh, shouldn't make a big difference. I even have um, some depth of field enabled. Uh, without the depth of field, it, will, uh, it would look like this uh, and it would render even faster. Let me go to 124 samples per pixel and 4K. It will take a little bit of time, but it pays off quite a lot.
and have in mind we're rendering a 4K image at 1024 uh, samples per pixel, 512 will give you good enough results for even animations, so you do not need to go this high. This is just a stress test, so you can see that it takes not that long, even with extreme values. So this is what it looks like. It looks fairly realistic. It read it in 41 seconds, something that you cannot expect to happen uh, with, for instance, cycles. And this is a result which looks almost as good. It's not, uh, it's not one by one the same image, but it looks good enough to fool most eyes. Um, so I hope you liked this. Um, if you liked it, do leave uh, something in the comments and leave me a like. And if you didn't like it, then feel free to dislike this as well. Without further ado, uh, that's it. I wish you a pleasant day and goodbye.